Good morning, I'm Diane Macedo. Thanks for streaming with us. In today's update, Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris are getting ready to make their first public appearance as running mates. Biden officially picked Harris to be his VP yesterday, making her the first black woman and first Asian American on a major party ticket. Also, an investigation is underway after dozens of people pack onto a New York City bus to throw a party. Video shows the group dancing, jumping, and smoking with no masks in sight and definitely no social distancing. The driver says he was trying to pull away from a scheduled stop when several double-parked cars blocked the bus and people started piling inside. The MTA says the driver was not injured. And a train derailed in northeast Scotland this morning. British police say a fire started and paramedics are on the scene. As many as eight people were believed to be on that train. At least one person has died. And those are the, some of the top headlines happening today. But now we want to take a look back with Senator Kamala Harris now officially on the Democratic ticket. She's about to reintroduce herself on the biggest stage of her life. So how did she get here? Rachel Scott has her story. The daughter of Indian and Jamaican immigrants, Kamala Harris was born in California, a child of Oakland. My mother was one of the greatest sources of inspiration in my life. I was taught that I had a responsibility to be a part of the fight for justice. The Howard University graduate became the first black woman to be elected district attorney in San Francisco. After her inauguration, she said her office was totally empty, except for a chair in the middle. Writing in her autobiography, I was happy to take my seat. As a young district attorney, I walked into the courtroom for the first time and said the five words that would guide my life's work. Kamala Harris for the people. Harris was the first woman to serve as California's attorney general, becoming close friends with Joe Biden's late son, Beau, who held the same post in Delaware. I got to know Joe through Beau because you've never seen, it's a rare thing to see such a special relationship between a father and his son. The prosecutor turned legislator gained national attention for her pointed questions at Senate hearings. Attorney General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh... Yes or no? Could you, could you repeat that question? But faced tough questions about her record. But when you had the power, why didn't you try to affect change then? Struggling to keep momentum after she launched her presidential bid in Oakland. Oakland. We want a president who has the ability to unify our country. Now joining her former rival Joe Biden as the first black and Asian American woman on a major party ticket. And this historic announcement generating a lot of excitement. Many who gathered here overnight said it was powerful to see the diversity of America reflected on that ticket. But the big question is whether or not it will generate enough enthusiasm to get the voters that Joe Biden needs to push him over the edge. Diane? We'll find out, Rachel. Thank you. Now, from voting choices to school choices, with fears still high over coronavirus in the classroom, many parents are now considering pandemic pods. That's when a few families hire a professional to teach a small group of kids in person. But experts now warn pods also come with risks and require some special precautions. We took a closer look to find out why. There we go! This is an elementary school level science class David Benetti is holding in his backyard. It's part of a pandemic learning pod he's formed with other parents in his San Carlos, California neighborhood. We realized our children weren't absorbing the same degree of, uh, of education that they were accustomed to and that, that we wanted them to have. Uh, that's when we formed our pods. Benetti, an advocate for in-person learning, now helps link parents and teachers who want to form their own pandemic pods through his free website, Start Normal. Things are really exploding, and now we're getting calls from across the country. But in-person learning pods can be expensive. There is a concern with the pods in, in that they are creating educational inequity. And experts warn pods can increase risks that parents may overlook, starting with the size of the pod. Well, I would not expand it beyond, you know, three to five other children. Realistically, we want to keep this as small as possible because every other child means increased risk. All families need to agree on safe practices. Making sure everybody is wearing their mask, um, hand hygiene, environmental cleaning and disinfection, having space so that um, children can really stay apart or socially distance as much as possible. Also, who's teaching? A background check is a must. 
Are they certified to be a teacher or are they just an adult that you're hiring to bring in? If there is something that happens to a child because of predators in the home, those parents would be liable for that. And host parents prepare for additional medical responsibilities. You may have a child who has asthma, um, who has to take albuterol. You may have a child who has an, uh, you know, an EpiPen in case of an allergy attack. And so someone's got to be responsible for that. Benetti says while it's up to the families he connects to do their own vetting and agreements, he does advise this is only for low-risk groups. Every family has to make their own decision. Everybody has to make their own choice. And, uh, and we basically leave it up to the parents to, to decide for themselves. And experts also tell us it's crucial that families in a pod agree to communicate if someone does get sick and agree on what they'll do if that happens. Then, of course, they have to follow through on those promises. Facebook has announced plans to ban, quote, implicit hate speech across all of its platforms. The company says it'll start taking down posts containing blackface or anti-Semitic stereotypes. Facebook has been criticized by civil rights groups who say it hasn't done enough to stop hate speech and misinformation. Several advertisers have also boycotted the platform in the last few months. Now, with the rest of today's tech headlines, here's Mona Kozar Abdi. In today's Tech Bites, the gaming war is heating up. Microsoft says it will launch the new Xbox in November just in time for the holidays. That puts it in direct competition with Sony's next PlayStation, which is also expected this year. No word yet on the prices for either console. All Twitter users can now choose who can reply to their tweets. Before sending a tweet, users will select from three options. Everyone is the standard default setting. And even if you can't reply to a tweet, you can still retweet, share, comment, or like. Finally, after a three-year absence, Google Maps is returning to the Apple Watch. The popular app left the smartwatch platform in 2017, but now a new version will let Apple Watch wearers navigate on foot or by car, bike, or public transit. It's expected to be available in the coming weeks. What about MapQuest? I'm waiting on that. Those are your tech bites. Diane, back to you. MapQuest. Good luck with that, Mona. And that does it for this ABC News Live update. I'm Diane Macedo. Thanks for joining us. And remember, ABC News Live is here for you all day with the latest news, context, and analysis. Up next, GMA Top Stories. Have a great day. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.